in resuming the uh, document of events, um, so I had a uh, I had secured my early release and uh, revocation of the uh, fraudulently and illegally obtained sectioning, uh, twenty one day sectioning. I uh, came out to find my home temporary home studio uh, destroyed, and um, uh, my wallet was being withheld, and uh, I couldn't get keys. So I had to break into my 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 home. Um, I also discovered that uh, members of Kevin Street had, had, had taken objects from my home during uh, what was supposed to be uh, a wellness check. However, since there's no provision in the, in the law for uh, taking belongings, possessions, objects from a home under a wellness check, really what that was was basic theft. Um, I will get into the events uh, on the 30th and 31st of August in a later uh Audio, this is just dealing with Eamon Dennis, Norma Salmon, Jennifer Cuff, Michael Hanahoe, and Ruth Cannon. Um, as I mentioned, I got my medical records and I, and I could see the extent of the fraud and uh, malpractice, medical malpractice and uh, negligence um, and uh, criminality. Um, Collusion, uh, uh, where uh, guards and uh, uh, the abusive uh, ex social worker, uh, head of housing and welfare, Terry Madden, had, uh, had told the hospital that my time living in Finland was a delusion, which I was able to prove quite easily. I finished ID, I finished social security number, uh, photos from my uh, attempted blinding and murder, um, court case papers, and um. I applied to get my medical records from James's Hospital, and um, James's Hospital initially refused to give me my medical records. Uh, they uh, they ran me around in circles. Um, I think they they arrived several months late, um, and when they did arrive, they arrived in non-registered mail, in a red folder that had been um, dumped in my apartment entrance, uh, sort of jammed lodged dumped in, uh, 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 near the post box or into the post box it was jutting out and, and someone had already opened it um the medical records were uh, a shambolic mess There's maybe nearly a hundred empty pages of, of medical forms um it's very clear that no port part of a normal sectioning was was uh, held during for me no access to a social worker or anything um and uh, the um, the the evidence of the medical records showed that uh, you know um, basically uh, my uh, abusive relative Terry Madden had um, had essentially broken several uh, points of law and committed um, fraud really and, and colluded and uh, to my um, to, to leading to my false imprisonment um, lied about my medical diagnosis lied about uh, my time in Finland. And the guards did too. The guards were the front face of this. Um, and uh, around this time, I, I learned to legally change my name and uh, I wanted to get some spelling mistakes on my birth certificate corrected uh, or verified. And um, I discovered from the records office that uh, I might be adopted. Um, I was still trying to get paperwork and uh, the, some of my belongings back from... Uh, uh, relative Terry Madden, the social worker, ex-head of Housing and Welfare in Dublin Corporation. And um, at, at the same time, I was uh, visiting Michael Hanno to uh, uh, see about uh, asking him. I was seeing him maybe three three times a week, begging him to do something about, about the case with the guards. And Michael Hanno was obstructing that. Um, basically feeding me a line of bullshit. Um, and... Uh, it was very abusive and it was a very harrowing situation. I was penniless. Um, Terry Madden had tried to get my um, Finnish medical uh, welfare uh, suspended, even though I was supposed to. I was only supposed to be in Ireland about a, um, at the very most two months and go back. Uh, um, so I, you know, there was a period where I, I was absolutely penniless, and I was in the homeless services down in Merchants Quay, um, but a lurks, but a lukes, the Capuchins. And the Penny Flower Dinner on on, um, on Mead Street. They're all great services. I, like if you have to donate anything, donate to them. Um, and uh, 
you know, I, I was trying to get my phones back because I had, uh, I, I needed uh, documents on them, audio on them, and uh, Kevin's three guards had, for all intents and purposes, stolen them and were refusing to give them back and, and had started taunting me about them. Um, additionally, in the, in the medical records, I could already see the beginning of um, Garda Brian Gillen's uh, uh, malicious fraud where he um, where is intending to take a bad faith abusive process, malicious prosecution for events that never happened as the lying begins in James's hospital, which where, where I have to remind you that that's where he tortured me in a hospital room and slowly broke my wrists with double lock cuffs, repeating, they're not tight enough until my wrists were purple, torn and bleeding. He had to be restrained from battening me. That's Carter Brian Gillen when um, I uh, informed the doctor how I got all the bruises, um, which was, as I said at the time, it was because the guards kicked the ever-living shit out of me. Keeping in mind I'm a, a disabled person um, with uh, severe PTSD and severe panic disorder. Um, so that's what a wellness check in Ireland is. If they don't kill you, they're going to beat the, the living hell out of you. When I discovered, though, that this, this level of the fraud and I was trying to untangle things and get my life back and um, find out what, 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 what happened to the couch and what happened to my, like at the time, trying to get something to do with my um, destroyed laptops because they destroyed my life's work. I was just about to publish a second novel that had been over 15 years in the making. Um, Terry Madden responded to this with a bad faith abusive process, malicious prosecution by way of a, um, a, a restraining order or a, a safety order, whatever it is called. That was its own um, hellish nightmare as um, Kevin Street guards uh, decided to try and weaponize that. And... Uh, and you know, one of the few things in agreement with Michael Hanno, he agreed that what they were doing with withholding parts of the document, not serving it, um, that they were trying to um, basically create some form of entrapment. They were, they were withholding parts of of um, what I was not, how I was not allowed to contact my relative um, who had uh, filed for this as a protective, fraudulent protective measure um, uh, to sort of uh, cover up what she'd done. And uh, it took me um, over 24 or 25 days to get to, to, to read the complete copy of the, of the court documents from the guards as they were withholding it. Around the same time, uh, Terry Madden had, had begun um, a sort of uh, insidious forms of harassment um, with uh, uh, using um, information and paperwork that I didn't have access to because of the my, my phones were gone and everything to try and cause distress and again around the same time I discovered from a chance meeting with a, um, a very stoned uh, drunk uh, Maya Reddy who's a uh, Maya Reddy Madden who's a cousin of mine um, who uh, got uh, incredibly aggressive in the Oak Tavern in, on, on Dame Street and had to be uh, asked to leave me be um, and was uh, screaming and shouting in the bar that I was an autistic junkie. And um, an American lawyer I was sitting with actually had to, had to ask her to stop. So, I, you know, it was very distressing and I had a good idea of the, of the fraud and defamation that was going on. I also had pressing matters outside the country, in the country that I've made my home, and was trying to get my uh, affairs in order. Um, at the same time, again, dealing with... The, the, this hara the, the growing harassment from Kevin Street guards, slow drive-bys, uh, taunting phone calls, and and such, and um, threatening language, um, and general lies. So all that's recorded. All the bloating done phone calls are recorded. So that's there. I can put, I'll put that online maybe Sunday. See how I feel. So. Um, I was faced with this, and, and I didn't know what to do. And I was asking Michael Hanno, and he told me, you know, I just turn up and, and, and take it. And uh, um, because I didn't, um, because I, 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 I was nearly 90% sure that Michael Hanno was um, Ernie, the friend of Andrew Madden, I um, told everybody but Michael Hanno that I was going to go to court. And uh, when I went to the Dolphin House um, to try and get the rest of the court papers, a representative of Dolphin House um, 
basically uh, shouted in my face, uh, just turn up for your borrowing order uh, in front of a load of people. And um, of course, when I made a complaint about that, I was told there was no record of it, no, nothing on the cameras. Um, but I, I have it recorded. So, you know, I, I became quite aware that uh, there was um, difficulty with due to the, the uh, I suppose, the overarching reach from uh, Terry Madden's previous position as the ex-head of housing and welfare, um, which was making my passage through this very difficult. And, um, you know, I made it clear previously that I wanted nothing to do with the person. I just wanted my documents. And, of course, the finding out I might be adopted point um, kind of muddied the waters a little bit. But, I, you know, my documents and my belongings back. And, um, which is another point of perjury raised later in the court. So on the day, uh, in, in, it was, uh, I think July, I, I attended court with, um, a Stephanie Power who there is emotional, uh, emotional support because I applied to the court for, um, a, you know, disability help and emotional support. And I was basically told to go sling my hook. So there was nothing there for someone with, with severe PTSD. And, uh, and ADHD and narcolepsy and uh, I was there for the roll call which if anyone who isn't familiar with Irish courts um, in the district courts and such there's a, basically a roll call of the cases that are going to be on in, that day in the morning and uh, they call your name and um, for the, of both sides of the case and you say present and they mark you down as present and then they, they, the cases are ordered and you go down and you wait in the lobby downstairs in Dolphin House um, we were there most of the day, and uh, it took the case was cold. It was getting kind of disturbing, and then um, I had a cigarette, and it's only that uh, Stephanie uh, went in and asked, and they said that it it, it had, uh, the case had gone ahead, so they hadn't. Uh, they seemed to have deliberately not called it down in the lobby, so we raced upstairs, and um, when I opened the door to the court, I opened the door to uh, Terry Madden, ex head of housing and welfare standing informally at the bar with Judge John B. O'Leary um, and uh, uh, chatting. And uh, when I walked in, the conversation they're having when I walked in was Judge John B. O'Leary saying, you know, and you're sure that he won't be here? You're sure? And uh, Terry Madden saying, yes, so she'd, been, she'd been assured that I wouldn't be there. So, uh, and then uh, they turned around and saw me. And... Um, Judge John B. O'Leary uh, lost his temper and started demanding that I hadn't, why, why hadn't I been there at roll call and trying to uh, scold me like some sort of uh, 1980s, 1970s uh, school principal, like one of the incoherent, bad-tempered ones that hates children and their wife. And uh, I just said I was, and he marched to the, to um, to where, he, where the judge sits, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, I sat down to check it, to check was I, was I, was I, uh, was I am um, lying and uh, I had all this time I, I couldn't get uh, legal representation I had briefly had um, uh, engaged uh, legal representation of a firm who um, I filed an OLSRA complaint against and they pulled a no-show and um, uh, I suspect maybe Hannah, Michael Hannah had something to do with that but I had put in um, a re- I'd written a request for a um, you know, for it to be deferred to another date so that I had time to get legal representation. And, uh, uh, you know, that was, uh, that was denied out of hand. And what, uh, what followed next was um, an hour, over an hour of abuse and perjury. It was clear to me um, that uh, Judge John B. O'Leary, who was a newly minted judge uh, from Dundalk, um, was um you know um friends with Terry Madden and uh it was um it was a little bit of a freak show it was like being um it was like being verbally it was like the private abuse that I would I put up with, with except in a court uh under oath on the stand um Terry Madden fl- flippantly admitted uh, child abuse by uh, sn- snarling at me that it wasn't every day but more I had to put up with um I'd like the constant verbal abuse from John, Judge John B. O'Leary. He was constantly kind of turning his head away from the mic to make comments about my, my intelligence and, and such. And he was berating me about everything. 
he cracked jokes about my child abuse. When I was trying to talk about the child abuse, he told me to grow up. Um, you know, like, the man shouldn't be a judge. He shouldn't even be in the legal profession. And uh, it was a humiliating, uh, abusive um, period of or, or an hour and a half or something. And uh, I, uh, I ha because I didn't have the full paperwork, I'd been denied that. I was forced, he gave me, I think, nearly a minute and a half to look at the, uh, um, uh, I suppose there was it there. Uh, supporting evidence thing that I hadn't been given, which was part of the reason I'd asked for things to be uh, postponed or, or, or deferred, um, constantly berating me. Um, if I used a word that he, that he told I didn't know the meaning of, he would stop and ask me to, to explain the meaning of the word. Um, I, at one point, he, he, he asked me to qualify how many books I'd written or published. And... Uh, he got into a pedantic thing about whether um, I had I had published two full books or whether I had published a book and novella, which he berated me for as well. Um, and he, you know, it was it, basically Terry Madden was allowed to um, do and say whatever she wanted. And I continually pointed out that uh, Terry Madden was lying on the road and he ignored me or, he insult, or Judge John B. O'Leary insulted me. Um, uh, often trying to turn his head off mic. Uh, and uh, I, there was one point where uh, uh, Terry Madden um, uh, made some statements regarding um, child abuse, and I said, uh, and and um, psych psychological abuse in, in adulthood, uh, including the uh, admittance of gaslighting and Terry Madden being a narcissist. And uh, again, this was all audio that was given to Norma Salmon, and, and that uh, Norma Salmon and Jennifer Cuff colluded later to keep out of court. Uh, I was uh, dismissed or ignored when I said I'd evidence. I dismissed or ignored when I said I'd evidence of, of, of that, that, that the other statements were, were untrue. Uh, dismissed I, when I tried to correct uh, what essentially was uh, Terry Mann's perjurious slander regarding my mental health and my time in Finland. Um, I was, uh, I was, it was ignored. I was saying it to the judge. I did my very best. Uh, this was the first time I've been in an Irish court to try and... Um, uh, defend myself when um, I could not get legal representation um, and uh, in the end um, I can go into that in more detail like it, 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 it's really Judge John Bealey is a horrible and competent man and uh, does not practice due diligence and from what I saw that was a, 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 a momentary lapse oh, shall we say not really of uh, pure abject corruption and uh, cronyism I suppose uh, there was no intention of hearing my side or, or, or anything or, or trying to clear it up and uh, it just it was basically me being verbally berated by the two of them and uh, with intermittent uh, off-colour remarks about my child abuse to the point where when I was trying to detail part of the child abuse and part of the psychological abuse and uh, opinions of, of medical professionals in Helsinki uh, he he was he told me I was he, he he tried to hurry me along, interrupted me constantly, um, made light of my ADHD, and at one point, um, like la what I was describing, quite brutal child abuse. He laughed. It was like I take it the two of you don't get on then. <laughs> like that's Judge Jean B. O'Leary. Like the man is a, I like hagfish. Actual hagfish have more emotions, more human depth and warmth personality um although how we would verify that in a court of law it's probably uh um actually it's probably doable you know they um they'll 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 they have a stress response uh so uh their man got the the the, the barring order which which again was like a golden rope and um the minute the, like it was finished uh she um began the narcissistic control, gaslight, abuse, and really what that was aimed at was to try and um, manipulate the post-traumatic stress disorder and the panic disorder to get a reaction um, uh, so that Terry, could, uh, Terry Madden could um, uh, apply for a breach of the barring order. Um, so I got letters, um, I found bills being changed in, into my name, out of my name, 
things were blocked, as I said, the slander. Um, acquaintances of mine told me they'd been approached by, by uh, Terry Madden and Ilva Madden um, trying to get information. It was very distressing and abusive. Um, when I informed uh, Michael Hanno of this, uh, he told me to um, that you know perjury was a crime and that I should file a, a complaint down in the, the Bridewell. Uh, because I couldn't go to Kevin Street, and he told me to file uh, an appeal. Michael Hanno also lied to me and said that Emmy Hanno did not do family law or, or uh, child abuse cases, which is clearly a lie, um, and a recorded lie, because they are one of the largest uh, recipients of of uh, legal fees with regard to historic abuse, their firm, Emmy Hanno. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so I, I did what Michael Hanno told me to do. I, uh, you know, I filed a, uh, I went, tried to go deal with the guards in the Bridewell, which will is its own episode, and I, I filed uh, an appeal. Um, I, did, I was so green and dumb about Irish court, I didn't even know that the appeal was going to be in the circuit court. And it was, it was in the circuit court before Judge Rosemary Horgan. And that's where Eamon Bennett, Norma Salmon, and uh, Jennifer Cuff come in. And um, I'll uh, cover the other uh, no-show law firm in a little bit in, in the next episode. This has run twice as long, but I had to uh, detail that case because, um, you know, I was doing what uh, Hannah would advise me with, with no help. Um, and he seemed to find this all very amusing, um, even though it was incredibly abusive and I was incredibly vulnerable. And... Uh, you know, I, I was I was providing him with 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 with, with evidence of my, of well, like irrefutable evidence of my uh, of what happened to me and the exact version of events, the the fraud and malpractice via the medical records. Um, I was quite distressed as I couldn't get access to the medication that I needed to function, and uh, Michael Hanno was negligent within all of that, and also seemed to quite gleeful. Um, however, when I attended him after the, the, the court case um, in Dolphin House, he lost his temper because he, um, he, he was, uh, he's, you said you wouldn't be there, <laughs> you know. So there I had my answer on, um, on whether or not Michael Hanno could be trusted, and the answer was no. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, I will get to the rest uh, in a little while. Um, I'm going to cut this now. So it is, uh, is at least under 30 minutes, I suppose.